Thank you. Thanks, Dave, for the remarks. Um, and I'm just so happy to be here with you all today. And a big thank you to Jen for inviting me to present at the Code for America Summit. So it truly is a privilege to be here with you all, a group of people who are not just talking about what should be, but are actually working to improve people's lives. So I've been working with Code for America for several years, as, as Dave just said. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about my, my history with Code for America. Um, I first became aware of Code for America at another conference, the Child Welfare Directors Association conference, many, probably about four or five years ago, where I saw a presentation by a Code fellow about the work he was doing in San Francisco on CalFresh. Um, it's available on YouTube. It's, it is a bleak presentation. It's, it's brutally honest about how difficult it is to apply. And once you've gotten the benefit, how difficult it is to get any information about your benefit. Thankfully, that initial interaction led to a partnership with Code for America to improve CalFresh, and it's in a much better place now than it was, was then. And I first met Jen when she came to Sacramento with Todd Park, who's a former US CTO, and Dan Hahn. And they came to tell me and Maribel Badger, who is the Secretary of Government Operations, that the RFP we were about to put out for the replacement of the child welfare system was going to result in, re in a failed procurement. Now, I think I surprised Jen when I said I agreed, that I thought that the procurement process in California was horrific. And actually, I think I may have said soul crushing. Um, and that I was completely open to suggestions for a better process. Now, there's, there's a theme here when the interactions with Code for America. They're brutally honest. But it's not to embarrass government. It's truth for setting up partnerships. And that partnership that we set up based on the interaction over the child welfare system led California to the agile modular procurements, which is a topic that the, C that the California CIO, Amy Tong, talked about yesterday. So you know, I'm a huge fan of the work that they're doing in California, but more broadly, the environment of engagement that they're creating throughout the United States. Now, everyone here in this room, I believe, otherwise you probably wouldn't be in this room, shares the goal of simplifying and improving the way in which people access government services. And at California Health and Human Services, we've been working to shift our focus from the client, or from the programs to the client, and improving access to services and improving the ease of use. We're fostering and promoting an environment for experimentation, calculated risk taking, and partnerships. These are not normal governmental values uh, that you see in, in a normal operation of, of a government agency. I think we'd also all agree that governmental systems generally lack the functionality one would enjoy in the private sector. In fact, they're quite often really difficult to use. Recognizing this, in 2016, Propel, which is a relatively new startup, launched Fresh DBT. It's an app that, through which clients are able to see their balances, they're able to check their transaction histories, get coupons for food, find out about job opportunities. That's exactly the type of partnership that we need. It's something that can work with the existing state system to make it user friendly. It's also it's the creativity that we need to improve the client experience. However, in the last several months, we've, we've had a problem. And it's continued to be a problem over the intervening period. So Fresh EBT works by accessing the state's EBT system through a client's phone. And what you do is you log on, and through the app, it, it goes into the, the state EBT system, and it can create all these different reports and visualizations for you of what's going on with your, your benefit. But recently, over the last several months, the EBT system has been crashing, and we've been struggling to figure out why it's crashing. So we're, we've been working to scale back the demands on the EBT system, and some people, and I know in other states, have even suggested denying access entirely through the Fresh EBT app. This has gotten some media attention. The New York Times has written about it, uh, amongst other um, newspapers and journals. And this was the genesis of, of Jen and, and Dan asking me to, to do this talk. And I'll be, be honest, when they first brought it up, I really wasn't sure that I wanted to address that particular topic. It's a little bit dicey. It's a, something that's happening real time. And it's um, happening between a couple of vendors that we have. So I thought about it. And 
why I decided to do this is that I think there's a bigger story to tell here. So some in the media are framing this issue as the existing order stifling a creative startup. And that's, that's an interesting framing and you know, it's worthy of discussion, but I think really misses the, the real issues and questions that are at play here. And if we step back, the questions that are being raised here are even more important and fundamental than that. Now, as I said with, at the outset of this, I'm trying to create an environment that improves the client experience. I'm trying to create an environment where we have the benefits, access to benefits that more closely mirrors the convenience, functionality, and simplicity that you'd find in the private sector. However, the primary functions of government are enrolling people and delivering the benefit. And when a system crashes, it jeopardizes this. Counties can't issue new cards. Clients can't purchase food. So we're in a situation where we need to figure out how to address this and Fresh EBT is just the first app. We're, we've created this environment where we're encouraging people to think creatively and improve the experience of people to develop apps. And we haven't yet done all of the, the groundwork that you need to do to really set the environment and set the ground rules for how that interaction is gonna, gonna play out. And if we don't do that, What's going to happen is we're going to have more situations like this where systems are crashing or we're having bad outcomes. And when that happens, and it happens enough times, state governments will start to shrink to their core, which means that they will make sure that the benefits delivered in whatever way they do, it won't be really a, a good experience for the client, but a benefit will be delivered and that the, the counties or whoever's administering that particular program are able to issue new cards and, and new benefits. And so what we are, the reason that I'm doing this is we need to figure out this. We need to figure out the ground rules. And the questions that we need to address are things like, should access to the state, uh, state system be regulated? And if so, by who? How should the state system be accessed? Should there be a APIs built so that we make it easy for, for third party developers to, to access the systems? Who should pay if there are increased costs for that increased access? How do clients know which apps are legit? Who's gonna be the one that says that that one's a, a good vendor and this one isn't? Who's liable if there's a data breach or if we have an unscrupulous vendor? The client, third party developers, or the state? And I can tell you if, if we have a crash and you, you, you get, lose access to something like EBT, I mean, that, that's food benefits for people. That's, you can't have that system go down and you can't have it breached. And there are certain steps that we could take that are gonna limit access. So we could do things like, you have to put up a bond in case something goes bad, then you know, we, we have that as a backdrop. Or we can set up rating systems or look at your history. All of those things are gonna, gonna impact what the marketplace looks like and who's able to play in it. So answering those questions isn't gonna be easy but if we don't find the solutions to that, we're, we're heading for, for a really bad situation. And what we want to do is we want to set the expectations that we should have an exceptional service experience for clients. So if you want to be in the room where we start the conversation, join me at 245 today in Grand Ballroom A and B. And thank you very much. Thank you.